Okay, let's talk about variance inflation factors. So I'm going to assume that x1 is n by 1, so it's a scalar. And then let me consider beta 1 fit under model 2 hat, where x2 is n by p2. Okay, so we've already shown that the variance of beta 1 hat fit under model 2 is equal to E of x1 given x2 transpose E of x1 given x2 inverse times sigma squared, where in this case, recall that x1 is a scalar. So we can write this out then, as, so this is one dimensional, it's not a matrix inverse, it's just a, a, a ratio. So we can write this out as x1 transpose I minus hx2 x1 like that, okay? So let's compare this. Re remember that if variance of beta one hat fit under model one, then would just be equal to be sigma squared over x one transpose x one. And let's assume that everything has been demeaned, that the intercept has been taken out of everything, okay? So let me write this out as sigma squared over x one transpose x one times x1 transpose x1 over x1 transpose i minus hx2 x1. Now let's look at this, this term right here a little bit. So recall if x1 has been centered then x1 transpose x1 is the total variation in my covariate x1. Okay, and remember that total variation can get de decomposed into uh, regression variation. So that's x1 transpose hx2 x1 plus residual variation, x1 transpose i minus hx2 x1. Okay, so this is regression variation, ss reg, and this is residual variation, ss resig. Resid. So we can then, doot, 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 there we go. Um, we can write this out as sigma one squared over x one transpose x one times, and then recall that if we took the regression variation and divided it by the total variation, okay, then we got the r squared. So you can do that calculation and show that this is one over one minus, let's say, R1 squared. And then I'm writing R1 squared just to remind myself that this isn't the same as the, the R squared when treating Y as the outcome. R1 squared is the um, R squared value treating X1 as the outcome and x2 as the predictor. Okay, well now this is very pleasant. So this is the variability that I would have if I ignored the variables with x2, and this is the variability that I would have if I included the x2 variables. So this term right here determines my variance inflation, right? Because if I were to divide those two variances, this term would cancel out, okay? So let's look at this term right here, one over one, over one minus R1 squared. Well, it's necessarily going to be bigger than one, right? Because R squared is going to be a number that's between zero and one, okay? And so it's this number then when one minus and inverted is going to be bigger than one. So that means by including the X2 variables, I'm going to inflate the variance. Also, R1 squared is gonna be zero when X1 is orthogonal to X2. So my, there's going to be no variance inflation that occurs when X1 is orthogonal to X2. But when R1 is, R1 is approximately one, my variance inflation goes to infinity. That means if I include a bunch of regressors that are highly correlated with this regressor, my variance is going to explode, okay? And so this is a very, I think, pleasant result. 
these things are useful enough that they give them for each regressor in turn. So x1 will get a regressor uh, for having considered all the other regressors, then my second regression variable will get a variance inflation factor having considered all of the other regressors, including x1, and so on. And so you look at these variance inflation factors, if they're very large, then it's possible you're including two things in your regression model that are highly collinear. And if that's the case, then you, you, you know, they're, they're not containing much orthogonal information. Now, they may be important to include because your central hypothesis under study is say whether or not, um, in, you know, in a study I was looking at whether or not uh, sleep disorder breathing ca caused an increase in blood pressure um, and we included body mass index. Well, body mass index and sleep disorder breathing, the, my two covariates were very collinear, but I couldn't exclude body mass index simply because it was important to include. But my variance inflation factor told me, oh no, that's very correlated with sleep disorder breathing, so you probably want to exclude it, but I didn't have any choice because the scientific discussion mandated that I put it in there and just eat the variance inflation that came about from it. So later on, we're going to talk about model selection. So the, the, what I've talked about up to this point doesn't give you, it gives you some probes to think about model selection, but it doesn't actually give you tools to directly handle model selection. It only tells you consequences of including variables, of including unnecessary variables, and excluding necessary variables. So that's what we've talked about in these series of lectures.